Now we call that input domain. The domain of a function is the set of the input or argument values for which our function is defined. That is, the function provides an output for each member of the domain. So consider a function going from x, the domain here, to the image y. Each of these x values corresponds to one y value over here. Now, the set of all of your x values that can be input is called your domain. The question is, how do you find domain? Well, for a polynomial, we know what a polynomial looks like. A cubic exists everywhere. And so the domain of a cubic is there... Here's a question for you. Is there an x value that you cannot plug in? Well, the answer is no. You can plug any x value in. You can plug in negative 10, you can plug in 0, you can plug in root 2, you can plug in any x value. And so the domain here is all reals because there's no restriction for what you can plug in. However, consider this function right here. If we want to have real solutions, what can't this square root be? Well, it turns out that the square root can't be negative. We can't have 4 minus x squared be negative, which means that 4 minus x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now let's solve this. Here we can factor 4 minus x squared as 2 minus x times 2 plus x, and this is greater than or equal to 0. We can make a line analysis here. Here is the graph of y. We have x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to positive 2. Those are the zeros here. So y crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and at positive 2. Now we can look to the left of negative 2 and see what's happening to y. Or 4 minus x squared, really. So instead of y, I'm going to call this 4 minus x squared. So to the left of negative 2, let's plug, for example, negative 3 in. 2 minus negative 3 is positive. 2 plus negative 3 is negative. So to the left of negative 2, 4 minus x squared is negative. This is bad, because then we're taking the square root of a negative number. You can test it even. I mean, imagine, for example, plugging in negative 10. Negative 10 squared is 100. 4 minus 100 is negative 96. I mean, to find real solutions, you can't take the square root of negative 96. So everywhere to the left of negative 2, this thing's not going to exist. Let's check in between negative 2 and 2. Like, for example, 0. 2 minus 0, that's positive. 2 plus 0, that's also positive. So positive times a positive is a positive. So everywhere in between negative 2 and 2, we're going to have a positive number inside of this square root. Now let's check to the right of 2. How about 3? 2 minus 3 is negative. 2 plus 3 is positive. Negative times a positive is a negative. So again, if you plug in a number to the right of 2, you're going to get a negative number inside of this square root, and we can't have that. So what this means is that the domain exists from negative 2, because if you plug in negative 2, you get the square root of 0. That's OK. 2. 2. Because if you plug in 2, you get 0, and that's all right. And everywhere in between negative 2 and 2, 4 minus x squared is going to be positive. So the domain here is x exists from negative 2 to 2. Let's take a look at another. Here we have y equals x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. Can we plug in any x value that we want? And the answer here is no. Again, we can't plug in any x value that we want because we have a denominator. And there's one huge, huge important rule of math which says that you can never, ever divide by zero. So we need to figure out what values of x make our denominator equal to zero. Well, let's see here. 
x squared minus 9 equals 0. We can set our denominator equal to 0, which means that x squared is equal to 9, which means that x is equal to plus or minus 3. So at x equals 3 and at x equals negative 3, this function does not exist. And so we can write that the domain is all values, is all reals, except for negative 3 and 3. This means not. So all reals not including negative 3 and 3. Now there's a bit more to this one actually. If we were to factor x squared minus 9, we have x minus 3 over x minus 3 times x plus 3. They might be saying, but wait a minute, don't the x minus 3's cancel out and therefore 3 can be a solution? No. If it wasn't in the beginning, it's not in the end. That's all there is to it. The fact that the x minus 3's cancel out actually will be important when we talk about limits. Turns out that if your factor that gives you a non-domain, if that cancels out, we have what is called a whole at x equals 3. However, at x equals negative 3, we have what's called a vertical asymptote. So there's a hole at 3 because it cancels out, and a vertical asymptote at negative 3 because that doesn't cancel out. But the fact that it cancels out does not mean that it is part of the domain. It's still not in the domain because in the beginning it didn't exist, and therefore in the end it doesn't exist.